today I want to talk about CSS, but CSS with JavaScript involved in that, and how to make the web brighter with the new APIs that brings Houdini project. Before we start, a few words about myself. My name is Vitaly Bobrov. I am living in Wroclaw for us uh, two years, and I'm co-organizing Meetup and Go Wroclaw here. Uh, I love CSS because it's awesome. Uh, I'm used to be a mentor at NG Girls and mentor inside my company. Uh, have a bunch of uh, open source projects, and you can find me on Twitter and visit my blog. There is a bunch of uh, posts uh, regarding Houdini APIs and so on, and I'm going to uh, create more of them here. And uh, you can also follow our meetup and grow Wroclaw. And if you will be in Wroclaw uh, at the end of the month, you can join us. You're always welcome. And we always looking for speakers for meetup. So you really are welcome to apply as a speaker. And meetups are actually a good uh, place to start public speaking. So um, does anybody know? What is Houdini, CSS for Houdini project? OK, I knew that. <laughs> so usually when people hear about Houdini, they imagine this uh, magician from 19th century that did some performances. And uh, the name of the project for CSS APIs uh, was taken as Houdini because it's also kind of magic that gives you ability to extend CSS engine possibilities with uh, custom APIs. So uh, I'm going to focus only on one API today, CSS Paint API. And it's just a part of our whole ecosystem of Houdini project. I'll touch uh, a little bit some another APIs but most focus will be about CSS Paint. And what I want from you after this talk, to come home and try to do something, to implement some Paint worklet, to play with it, and maybe apply it to your work. So why we need such project like Houdini? And on one side, we have developers who wants to use feature when it will be implemented in all major browsers, because we want to support all possible browsers our user, users could use. On the other side, we have browsers that waiting uh, to implement some feature before it will be used uh, by developers. So it's so-called dependency. And literally, everybody is waiting for something. We're waiting uh, for years to add some features like position sticky, for example, that still do, uh, doesn't implement it in some browsers right now. And <coughs> what problem solves by Houdini? We have this CSS rendering pipeline. Cascade, parsing, type at OM, CSS object model, layout, paint, and composite. And the thing is that uh, Houdini APIs are applied exact on the stage where they need it. And if we're speaking about Paint API, it applies exactly on Paint stage of uh, rendering of our web page. So uh, now we're allowed to solve uh, the problem, add new f features to CSS with JavaScript polyfills. But the problem is that they are too big. And that is why they slow. They slow down our pages, and usually it costs some money for companies. Also, uh, it applies these changes too late, because our JavaScript executed after a whole CSS rendering pipeline was done. And then we changing something in styles with JavaScript and triggering the whole process again. So it's not performant. And the last point, it's incorrect, because the cascade is not that easy. You need to keep in mind uh, all cascade rules, how they apply it, how to invalidate them over the time, and so on and so far. So another solution, we can polyfill some features with compile time polyfilling. And we have a beautiful tool for that called post-CSS that 
actually a babel for CSS. It allows you to use modern features uh, from newest CSS specifications right now and uh, compile them down to older CSS versions. So, as I said before, uh, Houdini uh, provides a bunch of APIs to solve different problems with CSS and extend our capabilities. So, we have uh, proposals for CSS Type to M, which is uh, types that are used internally in browsers right now. They part in all the values and trying to recognize which type was used. Is it the lens with pixels, EMs, whatever? Uh, also, there is a most awesome part, CSS Layout API, that uh, still uh, very experimental right now because the specification is not ready yet. And of course, we have CSS Paint API that is the most stable one because the specification for this API already uh, have a status of release candidate. That means that it will be uh, implemented without uh, major changes in API. And uh, we can divide all these APIs on two different parts. The low-level APIs like type at m custom properties, and worklets. Worklets is a high-level API, and uh, Paint API uh, using worklet. What is worklet? Worklet is something similar to web worker, but it's not a typo. It's actually worklet. So it's special JavaScript context executed uh, that possible to execute in separate thread, and it gives us performance uh, boost because of that. Uh, we can do some crazy stuff on separate thread, and our main JavaScript uh, with logic will be executed without any issues. So it's basic API to implement high-level Houdini APIs. And by design, it's stateless and could be executed in separate thread. So CSS Paint API, what actually it does? It allows you to draw on a special version of Canvas for any CSS property that accepts image, like background image, border image, or even custom property that uh, has a type of image. How to use it? Uh, it's just simple. In CSS, we have uh, access to special function called paint. And inside this function, we pass in the name of our paint worklet that we need to create in JavaScript. Uh, what about browser support right now? So it's shipped in Chrome 65 starting uh, last March. And uh, then it was ported to WebKit-based browsers like Opera. And now uh, Safari implemented it in Safari technical preview branch. That means that it will be released soon in Safari stable. <coughs> As, uh, each, and, uh, each team, they are interested. But before implemented high-level APIs, they need to uh, implement worklets and base infrastructure for that. So they definitely will do it, but nobody knows when. But they will work on it. And as any CSS property is safe to use right now because it's easy to fall back. If browser have no idea about paint function, it just keeps it. So you can replace it with static image or solid color. And that's it. Or you can use polyfill, JavaScript polyfill, that I don't recommend to do because, as I said before, JavaScript polyfills for CSS are slow, big, and slightly incorrect. But you can try it out and experiment with it. So how to create custom worklet? And there is three easy steps to do so. First of all, we need to declare a custom paint class inside separate file. Second one, we need to register this paint class with special function. And the last one, we need to load our worklet inside main thread, main JavaScript bundle or inline JavaScript. So how it looks like? We need to declare a uh, simple uh, JavaScript class 
and it should implement paint method. And this paint method provides you context that's actually uh, 2D uh, canvas context, a geometry object that has uh, widths and heights of our element we are applying Painter to, and optional properties and arguments. We will see it later. Then inside this file in uh, CSS Paint Worklet context, we have special function called register paint. And we need just you provide a name for our worklet to use in CSS and our class implementation. Then in our main bundle or in line JavaScript, we need to load our worklet. So to do it, we're checking if paint worklet exists on CSS object. And we here we can load optionally polyfill if we want or do something else. So then we call in paint worklet and just add module and provide the path to our worklet file. And that's it. We can use it in CSS right now. So it was all about theory, but we need to try everything. And as I said before, I want you to try it at home. So how looks like basic hello world paint worklet? We define class, we have context and geometry object, and then we uh, uh, render some circles with it. We iterate through double loop and using uh, canvas uh, methods like fill style, arcs, begin pass, we draw in these circles. In CSS, we use our paint function, uh, providing the name of our worklet, circles in this case, and as a fallback, solid black color. And that's it. So how it looks like? Um, here we have these circles, nothing special. And if we change the size of the element, it calls the render method for us. And this rendering called on paint stage uh, in browser. So browser automatically calls uh, render for us if the element size changed, not the viewport. And now I'm changing the viewport size to just show it, but the element size or some properties we are aware of changed, and then this uh, worklet will be called for us. So nothing special with this. We can do more. We can use some properties. Uh, it could be just usual CSS property like widths, heights, padding, whatever, or custom property. And to do so in our worklet, we need to define static uh, property called input properties that returns the uh, list of strings with properties we are interested in. And if any of these properties changed, our rendering will be called for us. So it's kind of si similar to what uh, JavaScript frameworks do. So then, in our CSS, we define some uh, custom properties and again call in our worklet. So, and this one looks like this. Again, we have circles, but now we can change uh, the paint with changing some custom property. I write simple script that uh, updates the CSS properties uh, with these range sliders. And it's performant in the union in separate context. Uh, also, what's similar to native CSS functions like linear gradient, uh, we can pass some uh, arguments inside a function. And to do so, we need to define, again, static property called input arguments. And instead of name of properties, we provide in a list of the CSS types we want to use. CSS types are used, as I said before, internally in CSS Engine. And now you are allowed to uh, tell the browser what types are you expecting here. And then in your paint uh, method, you can get these arguments as a list. So, and this time, instead, uh, creating some custom properties, we just pass in uh, arguments to our paint function. And everything will be updated if any of argument will change. And this will look like pretty similar, but now we have uh, 
arguments passed and we can change them directly. We can do like do the same but uh, in different way more familiar to other CSS functions we have. What next? We have another static property called context options. And for now, we have only one property in this object called alpha. What does it mean? It means if we don't care what will be rendered behind our element we apply in our paint worklet to, uh, we can just omit the composition stage of paint worklet to do. So it gives us additional performance boost. And by default, this alpha uh, set to true. Okay, and what we can do with this? We can, uh, some demos that I'm going to show right now uh, requires flag in Chrome. Mm, for example, these arguments, they are behind the flag. CSS Paint API in stable branch, but some things like custom properties I will use right now, they still experimental. So if you want to uh, enable them, uh, actually all demos are on GitHub, you can check them out, fork and play with them. You need to enable this experimental web platform features flag in Chrome. So we can use uh, CSS Paint Worklet to generate some backgrounds. Um, the simplest way uh, we can uh, generate uh, different images depending on size of the element. Again, not the viewport, but the element itself. So we can make some progressive logos for our uh, uh, websites or something. Also, we can generate some patterns. And again, patterns could be regenerated on element size changes or some property updates. We can use some different colors like I don't know, this one not valid, okay. Or just switching the palette. And I'm using for my personal block, uh, material background image. Uh, before that I used just an image and I still use it as fallback, WebP and JPEG. But now for users that has uh, support of CSS Paint, I provide in generated material image. And what I did, I did some small research. I tried to compare our my image made as JPEG and CSS Paint Worklet. So they are not exactly the same because I'm not design designer and I don't really care to be to have identical images, but they are similar. And what I have for CSS Paint Worklet, I have 800 bytes of CSS Paint Worklet. And of course it's not included CSS I need, it's few bytes to use in CSS and few bytes to load our worklet. But still it's pretty small. And uh, comparing to image, I have JPEG, minified image, uh, for crop for mobile version. I use different sizes of background uh, for different screen sizes and it's compressed and it's two kilobytes. So potentially we can save some data for our users. Uh, of course we can't compare directly JavaScript and uh, image because JavaScript is much more performance if, uh, inefficient to parse. But if we're speaking about such small amount of JavaScript, I think it will not be a big overhead to use it. Another thing, we can save the DOM. What I mean about this? We can reduce the DOM size itself. Uh, for example, material design again. We have ripple effect on different surfaces and buttons. And usually to implement such effect, uh, we define in some additional spun element inside button. But with Houdini, we can omit this and reduce the DOM size. So here we have this ripple button created and it hasn't used any additional elements. It's just paint worklet. Imagine that you have like 20 buttons on your page and for each button for this uh, effect you need to add additional spun. You have additional 20 additional spun elements just for 
something fancy uh, animated stuff. So we can save the data with Paint API. Uh, also, I created something more useful, like star rating. It's just a few lines of code. Uh, and I want to show it. So it's usual star rating. We can change the rating itself. It fills the stars. And with Canvas, it's easy to implement different uh, amount of corners for rating itself. Also, I created a QR code generator. So we have custom property with text. And we're passing it to Paint Workflow. And I'm using some uh, library to generate uh, QR code from string, and then uh, I'm passing it to Paint Worklet to render. So it should work, and it's pretty cool. And we can go deeper. We can use something like WebAssembly as a future to generate QR codes more efficiently. Uh, also, I created some charts. Unfortunately, I can say that they are acceptable. And I call this circle chart because it implements both uh, donut and uh, uh, pie charts. We can update uh, properties. It will render for us. And everything is pretty performant and customizable and easy to reuse. Then I created bar charts. It's just a bunch of rectangles. And again, I'm using some custom properties to customize this chart. So QR code uh, example is pretty simple. I just import in library, and it uh, exposes some method to create QR code. And then I generate in it and draw into canvas. And that's it, just few lines of code. Circle chart, also not that big just few lines to draw two arcs and fill them with different colors and parse some custom properties for values. Bar chart, iterating through data set and then generating rectangles. Easy as it could be. Another interesting thing, I, with bar charts I go more deeper and I used JavaScript inside CSS. It's not CSS inside JavaScript, and uh, actually, they have examples in the CSS spec how to use JavaScript in CSS. So I applied the uh, data set as a JSON-like object, list of objects with value and color. And then in my worklet, I just parsing it with JSON parse. So here is an example. On hover, I just change in this uh, property with data set, and it looks a um, little bit ugly, but, OK, hover. OK, so it's not properly formatted in Chrome. But actually, yes, yeah, this is a list with values and colors. Then I passing it to the paint worklet and uh, parsing with JSON parse. And we can change the data set itself, like, colors or something. And every time it will update it, it will regenerate chart for us. How to animate all this stuff? We can use old good request animation frame to animate custom properties that will uh, trigger the re-rendering of paint worklet. Uh, but could we do everything in just CSS? Yes, we have CSS variables. The, but the problem is that CSS variables are just strings, and browser has no idea what type is it, and have no idea how to animate one string to another string. So it just swap the value on 50% of animation. But Houdini has another API called custom properties and values. And you can actually define exact time type for your custom property. You call in function register property and pass in some uh, options to it. Uh, the name of your custom property and the main thing, the syntax, that means the CSS type. Right now they're exposing uh, more than 20 
types that they use in CSS engine, and they will extend this list in the future. We also can define if the property will be inherited uh, through the cascade. And the reason why we want to do the, that uh, is performance. Because if we will inherit this custom property, a browser need to perform more work to recalculate all the styles. And we can provide optionally uh, initial value. And the thing is that browser will parse the initial value as well for us and validate it. And if uh, initial value will be different type that we set, it will throw an error for us. But uh, it was the way to create custom properties in JavaScript. And in the next specification level, they decided to allow you to do that in CSS. You have special uh, key at property called property, and you can uh, provide the name of your custom property. And same, uh, similar options as we do in JavaScript. Syntax, initial value, and inherits. But this one syntax is not supported yet in any browser. Is, there is even no specification for that ready. And that is why I created some post-CSS plugin to handle it. So uh, as I said, post-CSS is just uh, mm, library that allows you to extend CSS. And uh, it parses this syntax and generates JavaScript file with uh, registration with JavaScript. And let's show some demos. So yeah, as I said, here I am animating uh, properties with uh, request animation frame. So on hover, I generate a random data set to animate and interpolating the values. But if we register some property, we can do animation with custom property. So here I have circle opacity property, and it has type of percentage. And now I can use CSS transitions to animate this custom property. So I call in transition, name of my property, and uh, usual parameters for transitions. And in hover, it just works for us. Uh, the browser knows that this percentage and how to animate from 0 to 100. And uh, next, I went a little bit deeper. And I used some WebAssembly module with CSS. So this is a game of life. And all the generation of state of this game is done in WebAssembly module. Then in my main thread, I'm passing this data to Paint Worklet to render. So now we have good separation of concerts. You have pure renderer that uh, executes uh, in separate thread and draws the image on canvas. We have in main thread GUI code to call uh, the WebAssembly module and update custom properties and WebAssembly module to generate the new state. So we have WebAssembly-driven CSS. That's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> OK, that's uh, almost all I have. And uh, if you want to get know more about Houdini, uh, this guy, Joan, uh, he created a GitHub repository with all available resources about Goudini, blog posts, videos, articles, and all this stuff. So if you're interested in Houdini stuff, you just definitely could check it out. Uh, also, I said uh, all demos are available on GitHub. I will share the slides later on. And thank you very much.